Floss too. Pam here, stitching between the lines. Friday afternoon, April 20th. Friday, April 20th. Coming here, we're sitting at the counter and leads into the kitchen, the breakfast bar. Behind me is the living room. And over my shoulder, you see in there the quilt that hangs on my office wall. So there's the office. The office is a disaster. I got a cat that just walked up here. Um, I'm not even going there. There's so many things going on and little piles as I organized for various events and things and stuff. There's stuff everywhere. There's stuff everywhere on this counter because all heck has broken loose in this house when it comes to cross stitch. Um, so first, 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 I have to do this. I'm sorry, I'm looking around to see what the cat is doing. Okay, he's good. Kathleen! Thank you. Minutes, minutes ago I went out to get the mail and uh, she was one of the rack recipients. Uh, she mentioned it on her latest boss tube for the open road abode patterns. Kathleen, uh, I will be meeting her at StitchCon this year and she was kind enough to sign me up. So, uh, thank you. She, I sent her the rack. Oh my, what did the light just do? Maybe outside, maybe the sun went behind a cloud because we're pretending there is such a thing as sun. You see, it is April 20th. I have a fleece on and all morning long I still wasn't warm enough. There was snow on the ground. It snowed all day yesterday. Um, so anyway, cat's coming back. It's going to be that kind of day. Um, so anyway, I have to thank Kathleen because when she showed this on her floss tube, I admired it and admired it. <laughs> Sorry. That took care of the cat. So it's a perpetual calendar. And uh, because we woke up to our ground totally covered with snow, I put snowy peanuts up there. And today is April 20th. So that was in there once upon a time. Um, I really admired it. You know, our childhood, there was not a lot of... Um, there weren't a lot of kids TV from our childhood era. I mean, there were Saturday morning cartoons, but when a peanut special came on, that was something special. Uh, we got to stay up and watch it. Maybe it was on at eight, I don't know. I don't remember that we got to stay up a huge amount, but it really was a big, it, it was a big deal. The Dolly Madison commercials, does anybody remember those? Um, that came on only during the peanuts specials. Anyway, I our local Hallmark stores went out of business a few years ago. So I, <laughs> when she showed this, I even went online and tried to figure out where I could buy it, which was nowhere. So um, I just thought, and then I debated with how far would I drive to an actual Hallmark store <laughs> to see if they had it in stock. Um, so anyway, this was such a delight. Thank you. Thank you. By now you've gotten an email from me because, you know, it'll take me like forever and a day to get this uploaded. Um, I was going to do a video last weekend. Today's Friday. So last weekend, but that was only a week, even less than it's a week since I made the last one, less than a week since it got uploaded. And I thought, oh, I don't need to make it. It won't even be 15 minutes. So don't even bother this one <laughs> because I don't even know where to start. The color, like for me, the light is in and out, and that really is the clouds. It's coming and going from the clouds. Um, I was, I threw my shoulder out, patting myself on the back for not having to buy all kinds of market things, and then, then the wheels fell off the bus. Um, my husband was away for a little over a week, and it was just a matter of, you know, it got to be like evening and I'd done all the things and had an early supper and everything was all easy and laid back and I would get online and I would start I'd start looking around I thought the last item would be in the mail today but it wasn't so I don't have that to show you uh, but I do it these I don't even know what to say I don't know what to say uh, they're just um, they're things I wanted things, I guess. I was trolling around, you know, like uh, stash unload. Okay, let's start there. I was on stash unload and this came up. And love it, have always loved it. Uh, 
at a quilt show, a national quilt show I went to a couple summers ago, somebody had made a quilt very similar to this and it was unbelievable. There was the water, the skaters, the people, the, the you know, unbelievable. It was so fabulous and it is featured in quilt magazines, a thread, I don't remember who, because there was a lot of thread, there was a lot of embroidery on here with their machine. Um, maybe sometimes called thread painting. I really don't know. I don't remember exactly um, what the description might have said. But anyway, there's a thread company that was using this that particular quilt as their back, as their whole full page, and then the words for their ad were on top of it. Loved it. Always loved it. So anyway, this is very reminiscent of that. Plus, you know, we like that Victorian. We, I, like that Victorian scene. But anyway, of course, it came up on Stash Unload, and somebody snatched it, like, instantly, because that's how it works for me. These just really go. So then I went over to Amazon, so I'm trolling around Amazon. Well, Amazon had it, so I just bought it because I wanted it. Because I wanted it. So there was that, and then there was another thing that hasn't arrived yet. It's another kit, so you know, uh, we all have mixed feelings about those, I think. But the pictures, you just can't always like uh, replicate them in other designers. And then a couple nights ago, and this is, I don't even have the same excuse if my husband was away, I was, I had admired this. I've admired this pattern for years. And I wouldn't ever pay the going price on eBay or on Amazon or if it ever, ever came up on Stash Unload. And on it's a Disney cross-stitch. And on Stash Unload, there had been recently somebody posted a whole bunch of the Disney stitch, stitching for sale. And every one of them was sold. So the demand is still there. But anyway, I would never pay the going rate for this one. Well, I was ordering something on Amazon, and I said, and it popped up on uh, the Amazon page, things I've recently viewed, and there it was again. And I said to my husband, I said, you want to get me something cross-stitch for, for Mother's Day? And he said, sure. I said, okay, I'm putting it in my cart. It's more money than I would pay for something. And he said, I'll pay it. Whatever it is, I'll pay it. It's a gift. Done. So I have just always really admired this one. I don't know. I, it's the whole idea of what's going on. And uh, fondest memories of raising my children are some of the trips that we took to Disney. Um, I'd say we went three or four times. That's all. It's not like it was an every year thing. Uh, so I just really, really, really admired this, how Mickey looks in the mirror and sees himself as Walt Disney. So I ordered that. So this was my Mother's Day gift. I, uh, uh, there it is. Uh, and what else? So then, oh, we need to go back to Open Road Abode, which I featured their pattern last time. It's here. And I talked about getting it, this postcard, see the pattern is the front of the postcard in the mail and I just loved it loved it so I was interested in finding more and the only thing I could find at the Silver Needle were a couple of the postcards and then some packet packs of four pattern a four pattern package I had really hoped to buy some of the this particular pattern in the postcard format to send to people to send to racks and people so I got Four of the four packs sent those to the people and the reason I ended up with that and not just one of the postcards that the Silver Needle had is that it had this one so even if you weren't into camping it had like the tree in the truck and the Americana look to it so long story to get to this point I contacted Amy at Down Sunshine Lane because people said to me, where did you get, well, I need to find those, I need to find that. I contacted Amy at Down Sunshine Lane and I explained that I had this pattern and that I really couldn't find, I couldn't find it online, certainly not in the postcard format, and that I had made a floss tube video and I had talked about it and people wanted to know where to get it. And the only store I can see that carries Open Road Abode were two stores, Silver Needle, which I already knew didn't have this one in the postcard format, and another store that I really didn't, I've never shopped at, I don't know, I just really was uncomfortable promoting it. So I asked Amy if she had any interest in carrying them. So she contacted the designer and has some patterns on 
the way to her website. I have checked the website a few times and they're not up there yet. She may not have them. I really don't know how long these things take. So if people are looking for open road, open road abode patterns, please check out Down, Down Sunshine Lane. Uh, it's an internet only store. She It's a small business. She runs it out of her house. She basically only shows um, patterns and things that she has available. So when you order it, it, you know it will come and shipping is very quick so there's no we know we all know there are some stores where we order innocently enough place an order and it doesn't come forever because the store is actually waiting for that pattern to get to them then they can send it to you um, so watch her website downsunshinelane.com and see um, what's on there in open road abode so anyway long story to get there is how I managed to find myself buying some more things. Probably these were at market. I have no idea because, you know, whatever. This one, so cute. I thought it was so such a cute spring pattern. Um, I'm not even going to try to say it. Not even. My daughter, who can speak these languages, is at home. I'm just not going there. And then, you know, I'm not a big sampler, doer, stitcher. It's not that I don't admire them. They're just, I don't know. This one is sort of sampler, it's sort of Quaker, it's ink circles, three little kittens. I just thought it was the cutest thing, and you know that poem, three little kittens have lost their mittens, they can't have pie, they need to wash their mittens, so there's mittens hanging on the line, and um, there's one of their lost mittens, I'm guessing. Probably as I stitch it, I might find some other lost mittens. It could be there's that's a mitten. So there's another one right there. I thought it was really, really cute. Um, so I ended up ordering those. And uh, I'm looking around. Oh, that's not even it. That's not even all. So there's those. Um, we'll work our way. We'll work our way over. Uh, something else I bought, and this was sort of unrelated to cross stitch, but not totally, is I was... Uh, I get the regular emails from... Um, quilt store called Shabby Fabrics and they were featuring some wool applique patterns and I watched their little how-to video and whatever and anyway they gave a demo on doing a particular stitch and I actually have a wool applique Easter project that's all ready for me to stitch it but it needs to have um, more than just a buttonhole stitch going around it going around each little section of the Easter egg to make it more decorative and I wasn't I just didn't have the confidence at this point to pull it out and play around with it so this book is just full of shabby fabric showed it I don't know if it's made I don't I really don't know the author's affiliation or anything but it shows all kinds of things and look at how clear and concise the make how to stitching instructions are so I ordered that along with a wool applique project that's already down in my sewing room because this is cross stitch. This is about cross stitch. Then I bought this. This I bought a few weeks ago, a month or two ago. I don't really remember. Um, I bought it because Pam of Pam and Steph just keeps stitching bought it and I said <laughs> I need it now. Like now, yesterday, Sansi and cross stitch because I like all things nautical and I swear to you if I lost everything I ever had in a fire this book and this book survived I would never be without any something to stitch just love all the things all the things every little thing let me see let me just find some more things that aren't next to a pattern <sighs> There's a monthly thing. They've done them in groups of four, but you could do them independently or not even put the name of the month in so that you would have it. Lighthouses. Love it. Sansi and Cross Stitch by Anna Field. I ordered it from Amazon. It could have come from another seller. I honestly don't know. For some reason... I feel like it came from Canada or something. I don't know. Then Amazon's a wonderful invention. You only need to know as much as you need to know. Oh, 
so where do you go next? Okay, this was the last. I am pretty sure the last of my purchases. I'm looking. Pretty much, it's the last. I was, I don't know how I get to these places. I like to just check Etsy to see what it has to suggest for me. Um, I really, I bought a couple cross-stitch patterns and I keep my eye on a couple sites, but I came across this cross-stitch Etsy store with this designer. The Etsy store's name is Good Flora Stitch Wart. Let me just show it. See that? Good Flora Stitch Wart. And this pattern is called Good Day Sire Christmas. I don't know. I mean, this was an instant. You're buying it now. It was an instant download. It went right into my, um, it downloaded, and then you put it into your Good Reader app. You can't do that all in one step on an iPad. It's a whole process. I don't know. I had to read the instructions, even though I have downloaded things before and put them in my Good Reader app. I don't know. It was a couple steps for me to do it, but isn't that the cutest? It's like you happened upon this, this little, there's a little story about happening upon the cabin in the woods, and clearly from the laundry, you know whose cabin it is. Good sire Christmas. Good day, sire Christmas. Good day. So there was that one, and then if you're buying one, even though it's traveling on the internet, we don't want them to travel alone. Um, this is called Festooned. Isn't that cute? so cute so cute I don't even know what the stitch count is I'm thinking ornament size I would leave the border off because of ornament finishing I don't like anything to conflict with the possibility of not making a straight line when I sew something and then just the beads this would be so cute with some buttons of you know not just beads but some buttons which leads me See, this, some, this something was covering it up. I got my very first Just Another Button Company goodie box. Uh, I don't want to really spoil it, so don't look for the next three seconds. I don't know. Um, if you haven't opened yours yet or gotten it yet. Peachy Keen. Peachy Keen. They look pink, but I think they're peachy, really. Peachy big ones. Peachy little ones. Green little ones and then the goodies the goodies goodies so I was really hoping I signed up right after that lemonade one came out and I was really hoping for the lemonade buttons but she didn't um, I could have stuck a note in there that said you can go ahead and start me the month before but didn't happen I really like those lemonade buttons um, and then cuz you know oh I know let me show you this another thing I forgot uh, to show you a little while ago, I've been struggling and talking about my Barnes of Hawk Run Hollow. Oh, I don't have a picture. Oh, there we go. It's being held on by my needle minder. Here's the Barnes of Hawk Run Hollow. Um, I've had some challenges with the fabric. I, you know, I really have a hard time stitching all these on high count fabric. And then make it more complicated, the piece is enormous. So it went on my scroll rods, it came off my scroll rods. I tried to do it in hand. I tried to use Q-snaps and I finally took it out. But I persevered and got the grass done. And then I stitched the first cow. And it actually went okay. It was going okay. I started right off. Here's me, starts off with the most complicated thing. I started with the largest double square. And after I finished this cow, I really thought I would hop up here. I wanted to hop up here and do this next red animal using the same color, but I have moved on to my Let Freedom Ring for a while, which I did not bring to show you again because it's so unwieldy in its um, in its frame. And it's a slow go. It's 36 count. The frame is big. I don't want a floor frame, so I'm struggling with my lap frame and trying to work way over at the edge and where you prop it and where you hold it and all that is awkward. All right, so those are all the things I forgot to show you. Now, let's show you some things that have come into the house or been uh, finished since then. Finished the latest installment 
that needs to be behind this, of Farmhouse Christmas. Cute as, a, cute as cute can be. I already knew I was going to put a tree in the back of the truck, so I didn't need to see anybody else's finished design to dream that up. Um, so I'm not going to say I stole that idea. I already knew I was going to do that, but who knew how hard it was to design that. But I really think it kind of came out okay. Uh, I did see and steal, borrow the idea from the Country Cottage Needlework Stitching Group, Facebook group, whatever, to make the windows look like the house is lit up. This looks like, I meant to get the picture. Hold the phone. This is the house uh, my husband and I lived in. Um, <laughs> we've been married for a while. I was pregnant with the oldest one, so all my children were born when we lived in this house. And this is sort of a side-on view. It was We used it as our Christmas card one year. But it really does look like this with uh, a little bit of the house is wider than the upstairs part, and it was white. So I'm very fond. This may go down as my favorite block. My snowman, his French knot eyes look like he's wearing black sunglasses. <laughs> I didn't want to take him out. Anyway, I did that. And then I did another of the quilt squares that Lynette designed. It uses the same thread. I goofed on this one and I made, I started with the, out, the outside border and then did the black border and then I did an entire row of all the white. I made my first white border one stitch too big all the way around. So it was one row too big and the black one was done. So I picked out all the white and I started at the center and thought I will go out and I will see what happens if I have to take off these outer two rows. So my block has one, ended up having one additional white row. And then I went and I put in a straight stitch sashing or border. Like if you were making a quilt and you needed to have a little border. Um, I first did it, I started it in red thinking it would pull the red out from the middle, but it just didn't look nice. So I went back and I did it with black and I'm very happy with it. I still need to frame it in. Um, I'm having such a hard time framing these in because I am using one strand of floss that's the same color as the fabric I'm stitching them on and it is just never coming out square. I'm a half stitch off one way or another every time. So what I thought I needed to do was go back and finish the first one. Finish it the way I plan to finish it, which is the beaded edge finish, which is why I'm working way over in the corner because then, see I'm working on the outline of the second one because then you, you do the outline exactly next to, I mean, you leave enough space for cutting so that you're joining this row to this row. And when you're using linen and there could be a wider fiber, you really want things to be as exact as you can. So I'm doing that with all the things. And I thought I really needed, because I'm having such a hard time with using the thread that's exactly the same color, um, I needed to finish one and it was very, very, very tedious because things are very tiny, but it came out exactly how I would hope. I like my ornaments to be real flat. I don't like them to be distorted with overstuffing and then you start to get that swooped in look on your edges. Um, this one I use black beads. I'm intending to change the bead color a little bit based on the color of the pattern. And then I put the bow on and to, now to me visually this loop is too big but it's a Christmas tree ornament so you really need to have a little bit of um, size you know to it. So I really it came out really nice and what I learned and decided I could do differently when framing these in is used two strands of my DMC floss. It went much easier, and I'm assuming, haha, that when I uh, do the beaded edge part, it'll be a lot more substantial thread to grab with my needle. So, 
there's a finish. I also finished, this was from my uh, fall small, I don't even know what to call it. I, that's, I picked out, I don't know, six, seven, eight smalls to do fall, fall patterns. It took me all the way at least into January. This one I think is Bump in the Night and I cannot find the pattern. I pulled it out because I knew I would be showing it. I can't find it. Mm -mm, I'm not gonna even pretend to say my sewing room is neat and tidy, but I couldn't find it down there today. But I did that um, where you just scrunch up the pillow. Here's the back. Scrunch up the ribbon. It is a black and white polka dot. Tack it down about every quarter inch. And it really did come out cute, 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 cute. That one's good. I don't remember. And here's another thing I'm learning. I know I'm getting better, but only baby steps. When I pulled out all the smalls I was going to do, and every time I talked about them, I knew what the fabric was. And then I cleaned out the basket of all the threads and the patterns, and I put them all away, and I don't know what the fabric is. I think this was a silk weaver. Um... What did they solo? So I don't even think it would matter if I knew what it was because I'm pretty sure you can't get it. And then uh, let me show you this. I showed this last time how I had almost finished it. It was almost a one sitting stitching one day, like late afternoon and a little evening. And then I had everything done except for the rest of the. And I had bought this frame at Walmart because we don't have. Hobby Lobby or uh, our Michaels is really tiny I don't know I was in Walmart and I saw it and I loved it and it's perfect it's so cute because these open road bow patterns if you stitch them on 14 count or 28 count fit in a 4 by 6 frame all the more reason to love them uh, if you go if you go follow open road boat on Facebook she posts some few freebies there was just a new freebie a couple days ago so she has a series that's the National Parks. I really don't, I'm having a hard time seeing what all is really available to know how many are available yet. Um, I, we camped growing up. Um, we camped with our own kids until they got too old, late high school years, starting into college. Um, and then we decided we were done camping for now. I don't know, maybe we end up doing it again. I don't know, hard to say. It's a nice family activity, a nice way to go on vacation and really see some things. Um, and then I got some framing back. Oh my gosh. I This one snuck by, you guys. Uh, I showed a tiny bit when I had started stitching this, like maybe I had done down to here or some amount. On a whim, I just picked it up and started it. It's one of my many, kit, it had been a kitted up project for a long time. And just one day, I just wanted something different to work on, so I pulled it out, and in just a couple days, I got the first boxes done. And then, at some point, I think, it must have been after I got back from Florida, I pulled it out again, because you could do about a box a night, depending on how stitch heavy it was. And I finished it and took it to the framer, it's still in the plastic because it's not exactly, even though the weather thinks it's the season to still be winter, uh, I will have to store it until next winter rolls around, really. So while I'm unpackaging it so you can see the frame better, let me see how far back I can get it. Isn't it cute? I don't even know what fabric to tell you this is on. It was kit it's been kitted up for so long. Doesn't wanna, it doesn't want to give. What is it caught on? Oh, it's caught on the little dots that... Sorry about that. I really should have had this open, I guess. I don't want to rip it because really that's the, the little, little dots around the corners so it rests against the wall and they grab the plastic at every inch. <sighs> Perseverance. I don't even have anything to show you while I... Let's see in this cruddy light the sun 
slash. Ooh, let's block out the big window. How's that? Isn't that awesome? <gasps> it just looks like wood. And it's the same sort of muted shade as what's in the... <laughs> it's still not going to come off. Still doesn't want to come off. Phew, there we go. So this is uh, Bent Creek Soapbox Winter. And it came out pretty cute. I had done this as an ornament a few years ago. Looks like log cabin quilt blocks. Christmas tree. Was fun to stitch. Have no earthly idea if it's still available. Sorry, can't even help you there. So then what else? I have two project bags here, so there must be two projects. Oh, there's a good one coming. Must be two projects to show you. I mentioned I'm working on um, Let Freedom Ring. That's my evening stitch, and it's kind of intense. And so it sometimes in the evening I've had enough. I put it away. So I went and pulled out something else, something that I had kitted up. I This was a, a floss, or yeah, what? Stash unload purchase. I just, it's just the kind of, it's, it's just a style I like. Geraniums are one of my absolute favorite flowers. A crock, a quilt. And then I had, this I showed a while ago, I had, um, was thinking that this was, you know, this is one of those patterns. It's all those little, a few stitches here, a few stitches there. So I gritted it to see how I would like that. And I absolutely hated doing the process. I'm not sure I really need it to stitch but I will admit that every now and again as I'm doing some little section of green I discover I'm off by one stitch or something and then I can back up real quick and fix it so I have a few leaves done and a little bit of the shading in the background um, it's I don't even know the fabric random piece that I think was the right shade-ish to do this ish the right shade sort of and uh but I'm currently working on my all my projects I'm working on are 36 counts so I'm going to go with this is either 28 or 32 and it's so refreshing <laughs> I don't think 36 is going to be my forte uh let me just make sure oh, there's all my threads a whole lot of greens that are all out to do those leaves. I'm just looking just to see because you're going to want to shut this off after I show you this because you're going to be sick with jealousy and I'm sorry, not sorry <laughs> to be showing you this. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the things that cross stitch, those of us who cross stitch, it allows us, this is on one of the things I've always liked, is it allows us to create some decor in our home that's different than what non-stitchers can have and I always liked that I had a friend for a lot of years a good friend who's she was just her decorating style was very she just really had a flair and her home was always lovely I always enjoyed seeing what she had done and she had a sister-in-law that was so sick with envy that she would want to duplicate every single thing down to the exact shade of color, the exact way the shading happened on something. It was a, it was a sad obsession and it used to make my friend crazy. Um, and her you know, sister-in-law was duplicating everything, everything that she could possibly duplicate. And I used to just think, ha, <laughs> She can come to my house. She can't duplicate a darn thing. So anyway, so we make we stitch things, and unless we've changed colors or you know our fabric choices, pretty much when you stitch something, it comes out much like the other person's. Uh, so that's not the full story. That's what led me to this fabric choice. Let's go there. Um, I was watching Michelle Bendy Stitcher the other day and she was talking about her Jeanette Douglas class and I thought, oh, I have a Jeanette Douglas pattern somewhere that I'd love to start. So that put the little bee in my bonnet. So I got out my this pattern and I don't know. I w oh, I was looking around for white fabric to do it on cause, because I thought white would be the right choice and I didn't have any white. So while I was at Down Sunshine Lane uh, buying those other things I showed earlier, I was looking at their fabric and 
she had like some one-offs. <laughs> I didn't, I, it was almost too much to hope that this one-off was still in stock and that I was going to get it. But it came. Can you even, can you even imagine how this is going to look? In this cruddy light, haha. Ha. Let's see if we can get some. There's grays and there's blues and the red, white, and blue in there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, shut the front door. I'm telling you. Oh, I cannot even wait. It, I my pattern came with the with the accessory pack, which is the silks, and there's a few buttons, a few stars, and that kind of stuff. So it got a project bag because it will be imminent that I start this on this blue and white gingham, which I don't even know if anybody can even get this anymore. <sighs> Made me very happy. Made me very, very happy. So that's what's going on in the world of all things stitching in my house, where there's apparently a lot of stitching time. Uh, my husband's going away again next week. I don't think for the full week. He doesn't think for the full week. Wednesday or Thursday night he'll be home. Um, so I will be stitching some more and I'm going to try not to shop more. Although I was watching, I've been watching actually a couple different people have shown Cricut collection patterns that I feel like I need. So I'm trying not to go see what's available in the Cricut collection <laughs> patterns everywhere. Um, and then, I, but I do have to show this just because this is funny. This is kind of funny, sort of. I use this stuffing in my ornaments that's called um, cluster stuff. And, you know, Vanna always says loft, loft, loft. You can't loft this stuff because it's like these little clusters. And uh, my friend Carol of um, Stitching Dreams, her blog, she does fabulous smalls and ornaments. This is what she uses too. Uh, so anyway, I have this bag and I'm all the way down to the end of my bag. And so I've been looking all over for where is more cluster stuff and nobody has it. Like I would have only bought this at Joann's. There's just really nowhere else I would have gone. Looking online, Walmart claimed to have it, but I went to Walmart and they didn't have it. So I, uh, I went to, you know where, Amazon, and I bought <laughs> the smallest quantity I could, which was five pounds of cluster stuff. And the box came, and the box was pretty good size. The box was like, it was a box. And yesterday I opened it, holy crap. That five pounds was in plastic, like with the air sucked out of it. And then it's sewn into this big giant white bag like that you pull the thread and it opens like if you're opening kitty litter or a big bag of dog food or something. That thing opened up, that white bag opened up like the size of half of a twin mattress. <laughs> this thing, I'm like, oh my gosh, where am I going to put this thing? Lifetime. I have a lifetime supply of cluster stuff. So I'm gonna to try to fill this bag, but I still have a bag that is so big I can't shut it into one of the big plastic tubs. I do not know. So, lesson learned, I'm not ordering five pounds of cluster stuff from Amazon again. Well, I won't need to because I have a lifetime supply. What am I gonna do? I contemplated buying the trash can like uh, Vonna uses with hers. And we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with the five pounds of cluster stuff. Live and learn, right? Live and learn. So anyway, uh, if there's anything I can answer any questions about, because this really had a lot of, lot, a lot of things going on, let me know. I, I encourage you to go check out um, her Etsy store. Good Flora because I can't read backwards. Uh, Good Flora Stitch Wart. She didn't have, there aren't a ton of patterns or anything, but she did, she has some that are just sort of uh, with a funny twist. Like she had one that was, it looked like a shelf hanging on a wall with all the little compartments and there was something different in each shelf. And the bottom one must have been, must have had a bunny in it. 
and the bunny is running out of the screen because it's kind of macabre, the rest of it. I just thought that was really funny. The bunny did not want any part of whatever was going on around it. It's kind of funny, cute. Anyway, uh, Friday afternoon, I don't have a lot of plans for the rest of the weekend, so my sewing room and or stitching, and it's the usual. So have a good one. Oh, I have to get ready. Graduation. My daughter's graduating in a few weeks. Graduates on Mother's Day. Yay! My baby's done with college. And moves home where we'll have a house full of company coming to go attend her ceremony. And she's graduating on Mother's Day. Mother's Day's my 29th wedding anniversary. And a couple days before that's my husband's birthday and it's a biggie. It's a big one. So I don't know what we maybe will do for his birthday. We may float it. If you if you watch the middle, you know what that means. You're floating it uh, until all the company and all the busyness is gone. And uh, maybe do something special because it's a big one. So it will be busy next few weeks, but I really should be able to get in here and get at least one more video done, especially with all the things I'm doing that there will be progress to show. So uh, thank you for watching. There's so many choices. It's so awesome. But thank you for watching. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, some of us that have been doing floss, I've been doing floss for more than a year. Um, I felt like we when I started, it was sort of the boom, but now there's really the booms. <laughs> It's busy. It's a busy place. So thank you for stopping in. Um, I try to comment on all the comments. Every now and then when I go back and thumb through my comments, there's a comment in there that I didn't get an email about and it's out of order. Like I've asked them to put them in order of uh, newest first. And uh, so I don't know if they stay out in limbo somewhere. I really don't know what the deal is. But anyway, I really do appreciate it. I really try to answer all questions in the comments and to heart your comment just so you know I did see it. Because sometimes there isn't really um, a question being asked or something. Somebody's just making a comment and passing or whatever. So anyway, have a good weekend. And I am hoping, opt I'm very optimistic spring will really be here. So bye.